So to quickly summarize this video, um, basically the main points are to not panic sell, don't fall victim to FOMO or fear of missing out. Um, don't try to time the market. Understand that longevity within the market um, decreases your risk on a, on a longer time horizon. And just realizing that, you know, um, the stock market is essentially an emotional roller coaster. And when the fundamentals of a business do not change, like a Tesla, for example, but the stock is plummeting, you don't panic. Um, and that's just all my opinions. I said, of course, you do your own thing and just roll with it, however you want to roll with it. But that's a quick one minute summary of this long video I had to do because I've been out for so long. I hope y'all enjoy. One thing that I meant to add, and this is something that I stress, time in the market beats timing the market. Every time, nobody has ever guessed the market correctly for decades and for years or whatever, consistently. Nobody's ever consistently done it. So it doesn't matter how much you feel or how many times you hear analysts and all these specialists say that the market is overvalued. It's just their opinion. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You, I don't know what's going to happen. I definitely don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I do know that the odds of um, you know, stock choices succeeding, strengthen when you give them a longer time horizon. It's, it's, it's a proven method. So definitely be smart about rebalancing your portfolios and all that stuff. But I, for me personally, and you do as you please, I'm not dipping in and out of the market and all that stuff. Um, I'm just not going to do it. All right. So it's been a little minute since I was able to post a video. Unfortunately, I got locked out of my laptop and that mess was a whole hassle. So I just got that cleared up yesterday. Uh, I'm on my way to Justin Stowe for one of his pop-up events that he do like every month now. So I just wanted to recap what happened since I've been going in the stock market. I've been posting stuff on um, the Instagram page at 6 Fat Daddy 9 so just so people can stay updated because I wasn't able to get into my laptop to post a uh, YouTube video. So Tesla, starting on like September 1st, Tesla, after the stock split, um, it just kind of dropped. Like it went crazy. So a lot of people get scared. The NASDAQ started falling. The S&P started falling. Like the Dow is falling. Everything's falling. So you get into this correction territory where um, the market loses 10%. Um, we hit that in a matter of a few trading days, I want to say. So around like September 8th, stuff had kind of bottomed out. It started to recover, but stuff is still fluctuating. With Tesla stock specifically, I'm real heavy on Tesla. They were selling like $5 billion worth of shares. So people scared that the stock gonna get diluted. So we talked about this before. The more availability of something there is, the, the less valuable it is. More stocks, less valuable to people. So you had that going on. You got um, people, high executives, they selling a bunch of shares. I mean, we all can look at that stock and say it was clearly blown away at that point. It had no reason to truly be sitting at that price. So when I talked about how the stock was going to surge and it did once the four to one or five to one stock split was announced, just like Apple did, you don't go start in positions at those high values it's not practical to do that you can do whatever it is that you want to do i'm just talking you don't have to take none of this kind of advice i wouldn't personally start a position around september 1st august 31st because this is the highest that these stocks have ever been the stock comes crashing down battery day comes and the announcements are not as big as people wanted them to be um, a lot of investors expect Tesla to just be like that. So when Elon Musk talked about different things, I'll do another video on battery day. How about that? We'll just leave it at that. So Tesla starts dropping again. So you also tie in everything that's going on with politics. People don't know what's going to happen with the election. 
You got um, Joe Biden, who's probably the leading candidate at this time. People, guys with the big money, they don't want to be paying more money in taxes. So that scares them. You talk about um, different stuff like healthcare. You know, you watch VHT, the Vanguard Healthcare ETF. That's been kind of falling, been tumbling. Is it a bunch of stuff going on? You got stimulus that ain't came out. This new stimulus pack pack is still stalling. Politicians ain't really making no ground with none of that. So it's a and then on top of that, September is historically the worst month for the stock market. So here we are in September. And all of this stuff kind of has been talked about, or the vast majority of it has been talked about on the Instagram. So definitely go follow that and check it out. So everything right now has been against the market, but stuff starting to pick back up. When you look at Tesla specifically, moving forward, um, I believe Elon Musk has stated somewhere that they've had their highest daily production or delivery of vehicles like ever. So they're trying to hit a high number, a high, they had a high target that they're trying to hit. Um, they're trying to make the record deliveries for this quarter. That's about to end here very soon. So I believe that once October comes, stuff going to start to look a little bit better. If earnings are as good as people would like to believe. Now, everybody got different expectations, but me personally, even when I feel like stuff is overvalued, that does not make me sell my stocks because I do not know when something's overvalued. But when I do feel something's overvalued, I will not start a position with them. And if I do start a position, it'll literally be like a dollar just so I don't forget to buy the stock. Nike, for example, man, they sales been booming on the internet like throughout the pandemic. And they stock surged at like 12%. And I talked about this in a post. Definitely go look at that on the Instagram. I, I got mad at myself because I was like, dang, why did I not buy Nike stock? Because I remember looking at it months ago. And I'm like, man, if I had bought it back then, blah, 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 whatever. So then I just thought to myself, you know, I got all these broad-based ETFs where they cover a good portion of the market. So I just went and looked and did some research, ETF.com, to see which ETFs hold Nike stock. And lo and behold, I got a bunch of ETFs that hold Nike stock. So I didn't really miss out on much of anything. I didn't have direct exposure to Nike like I wanted to. So I'm starting to position with them. I'm going to let them cool off a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit, little bit of money here and there. And one thing that I've been stressing uh, with my portfolio is I have to start diversifying because, man, I saw that I was super heavy into technology. And my thing is that me being um, an engineering major and working in engineering, that's, that's what I know. That's what I like. But the truth, the, the harsh reality is I ain't no expert. You know what I'm saying? So I have to give credit to the other sectors because other sectors do make money. And I'm going to make another video too. But when you look at the amount of, amount of money that's flowing into technology, the tech sector, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Looking Even from January to now, I, I'm going to do a video on that probably, hopefully real soon so y'all can see that. Just kind of see where the money goes in the market. And yesterday, Friday, um, like Carnival Cruise Line stocks, uh, you know what I'm saying? Those cruise lines, they start booming because stuff is looking a little bit better. You got the biotechnology sector is kind of coming back up a little bit. They're becoming a little bit more relevant right now with Novavax making a big announcement that they're going um, starting late clinical trials out in Great Britain. And then they asked for like 10,000 patients. And they're expecting to get like 30000 in the U.S. or something like that. So sorry for the long video, all the talking, but that's pretty much what's been going on. I got my laptop bike. Hopefully I can get this video edited and put it out tomorrow if I don't get two blitz tonight. But I can go ahead and tell you right now, I got two blitz last night. I woke up on my mama flow. I ain't even know what was going on. And all I did, I drank like three beers. Ain't, ain't, that, ain't that sad? I'm like an old man at this point. I don't, I don't even be drinking no more. Like... I don't even be drinking like that no more, for real, for real, but we we should be having a good time on the page, on the YouTube channel here soon, because we we finna, me, and, me, Justin, Taylor, our birthday next month, in a couple weeks, so we gonna get super duper blitzed, for real, for real. Y'all see what the shirt say. Good boys need a spanking too, I mean, so, you know, subscribe to the channel, share this information with your people. Oh! One thing I did forget to mention, I love watching Graham Stephan 
on um, YouTube. And I watched one of his videos where he sat down with Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. And something that I never had thought about was how much direct exposure we should have to stocks. And I want to say he said once no sector you should have more than 20% of your net worth allocated to. And then like stocks, I want to say he said like 5%. So Lord knows I got more, more than 5% of my portfolios that di are uh, directed to Tesla or Apple or something like that. So he said every 90 days, you should sell off some of that stock. So you, when a correction does come, like what we just experienced in September, you don't get hit as hard and you've locked in your profits. You take that profit and start diversifying. So what I was doing, I just stopped buying those tech stocks and I just started buying other stocks, other ETFs and other sectors with the money that I continuously put in every time I get paid type stuff. So and Graham Stephan's counter was that he didn't want to get hit in taxes. He, I guess he says something like 50% in taxes. Now, he got to make some, some crazy money to be paying 50% of taxes. But I, I don't, I ain't, I ain't really got into all that kind of stuff. I know damn well I ain't paying no 50% taxes to nobody. But again, sorry for the long ass video. Mind you, it's been like two, three weeks or something like that since I posted. So it's, a lot has happened. So this is a lot of things you should consider. A lot of things going on. But just know we getting super blitz. We getting rich. We getting wealthy. That's what I'm saying. We're getting wealthy. We're not getting rich. You get rich in the streets. We out here. So make sure y'all like, subscribe, share this video with your people. Just stay tuned in, man. Just stay tuned in. I got y'all.